Hey everybody, it's Alexander A. Manzoni, and I'm going to be doing a reading from American Carnage. All right, this is Eagleman's called Fefe. White House, Washington, D.C., RSA. It was a regular day at the White House. Eagleman had just cut another deal with the Ruskies to put a new American consulate in St. Petersburg, which was very funny, you know, because the city had been under NATO siege for a number of years. What was funnier still was that prior to the deal, Eagleman had the city marked for heavy Moab bombardment. Not anymore, though. Nope. America was turning its back on everyone who thought they could count on them. Nothing like a bit of politicking to get the blood flow into your nuts. <laughs> right, Bo? I said, am I right? Said Eagleman. Oh, that is correct, Mr. President. Get me my coffee, yelled Eagleman. I've got a nation to run. Ah, <laughs> oh, say, are you going to need sugar with that? You know how I like it, Bo. Don't give me any shit. Coffee was, of course, coffee. That was people called it sometimes in those days. It all had to do with someone's misspelled tweet. Someone who is assuredly not being lampooned in this book. Someone who may or may not have a fleetingly tenuous grasp of subtlety, as well as the English language in general. Oh, nope, not at all. Bo handed the president another executive order to sign. Ooh, this is reaffirming America's commitment to not give two flying fucks about the environment to the rest of the world. It was basically the reverse version of the Paris Agreement that America backed out of 70 years ago. Which, if you adjust from the temporal dynamics of this or that, was two days ago, 6-3-2017. It was no surprise to most, anyway, when the sea levels kept rising and nearly all the global catastrophes that the eggheads predicted, uh, well, they all happened in due course. You know, said Eagleman, this climate change business all lies. Never mind that Mar-a-Lago was now an underwater attraction, as was the entire Floridian Peninsula. Americuba only survived because of the government's need for a good prison island. Entire countries had been swallowed up by the sea, causing more refugees, which led to an incalculable level of pain and misery. Though this mattered little to Americans, as they were facing their own unique sets of problems at home, what with all the Gang bangers and ignorants and hippies running around thrusting their various agendas upon the populace with bombs and bullets and treachery. Lies, I say, spat Eagleman. Who is he telling this to? We're all on the same page here, you know, whispered one of the interns, Winky Chesterfield Eagleman whom was his nephew Murdoch's uh, platinum-level blonde trophy wife to another much less important person in the furthest back corner of the Oval Office, which is now shaped like an octagon, but not called as such. You're lucky you're my kin, Winky. At least by marriage. Otherwise, you'd have been dead a long time ago. I love you, Uncle Roy. I told you that, not call me that when we're working. Of course, Eagleman was screwing her when no one was looking. This created a bit of bizarre sexual tension whilst attending to governmental duties. I don't see what the problem is anyway, said Eagleman, briefly gazing down at the hastily written executive order. It contained numerous spelling and factual errors, but that didn't matter because officially nothing mattered anymore except what the government had to say. Eagleman continued to repeat these falsehoods even as the RS Army Corps of Engineers were building coastal bulkheads to ever-increasing heights. But that had nothing to do with climate change. No, not at all.
It was all one big plot to castrate the economy by forcing those poor mega billionaires to fit the bill, to clean up after themselves. Well, isn't that tough? Boy, I must say, you guys have it harder than anybody, you know? And fuck who anybody, uh, what anybody says otherwise, you know? <laughs> right, though? It was always interesting that no matter what Eagleman did, his businesses always got taken care of. Same with all of his buddies, of which there were so many. Oh, you have, don't have enough time in your life to hear about all of them. Because they were inconsequential. The only thing that was of consequence was their money and their connection to the biggest snake in the American political game since, well, um, what's his name? What's his name? You know, the guy with the... <laughs> Not that I forgot his name. It's all part of this game of subtlety. Maybe someone will read the juicy parts out loud to him. Somebody. Not today, but maybe someday. And I don't expect him to like it, but that is the price of satire. You know, like the cost of business. Make America great again. Oh, do, 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 do. oh for you foreigners that aren't familiar with the hep lingo of the 2017 world, MAGA. It's an acronym that means make America great again. What idiot came up with that dribble? Oh, you really, really don't want to know. It was probably a POS government Uber computer under Cheyenne fucking mountain. Probably right next to the Stargate. Or maybe in Madman, Adman, not John Hamm, that had recently driven the better half of a screwdriver directly into his brainstem. You tell me, America. You tell me. Hopefully, by the time this book is published, you will have already learned some of the lessons that I am desperately trying to impart on you all before it's too late. Then again, maybe it already is. Maybe I've run out of time. Maybe the only way for me to go about this is to act like the world isn't probably going to end under a hail of nukes, possibly by the time I wake up tomorrow. You know, you never know, you know? I mean, I don't know about that. Is that what you're doing right now? Better turn the TV back on before it's too late. You know how these writers get. Do you? I'm sure you do. One of the faceless interns, of which some were robotic, finally arrived to bring Eagleman his coffee. Eagleman took one sip and upended the cup into the intern's pockmarked face, flip cup style. This coffee tastes like your mother's piss. Give me another one or die trying. Die. So presidential, I am in awe of his majesty, aren't you? I said, aren't you? Now it's part one of this video, continue in part two.